Here, Jen Caruso and the keeper. Here we go. This could be the game. Caruso, what a move. Shot. Good evening and welcome to Armin Colombo Field at Rocky Marciano Stadium for this BCA Sports presentation of Brockton Lady Boxers Soccer. My name is Peter Zimbor. Joined alongside my broadcast partner, Mr. Matthew Nelson. Tonight, the Lady Boxers welcome in the Durfee Hilltoppers, who hail from the fine city of Fall River to the campus of Brockton High School for a big three divisional matchup. Matt, when you have a divisional matchup, the stakes are certainly heightened. Big game, big game. The, the Bucs is doing good so far this season, but you got to win the division to get into the playoffs, so the Bucs are hoping to pull out a win here tonight. Take a look at the starting lineup for the Brock and Lindy Boxers as both teams are amidst huddles right now, awaiting this game to kick off, much like we are up here in the press box. Starting lineup for the Brock and Lindy Boxers at goal number one, Lauren Seaver. When Lauren Seaver is doing well, these fans get excited. I like to call it the Seaver Fever. And uh, they were very excited as she was coming out earlier. Number four, Ariana Almeida. Number seven, Mariah Texera. Number eight, Nicole Fernandez. Number nine, Kaylee Mency. Number 10, Narita Montrand. Number 11, Morale Marion. Number 12, Haley Miller. Number 13, Lindsey Gomes. Number 22, Jennifer Crusoe. And number 24, Ariana Sylvia. For the Durfee Lady Hilltoppers, uh, their school tops a hill in Fall River. That's why they're the Hilltoppers. Uh, we have number 3, Courtney Cabral. Number 7, Tori Borges. Number 8, Sarah Normington. Number 9, Jordan Gavin. I'm pausing because I want to hear this chant. This uh, this chant of the Durfee Hilltoppers was quite impressive to get themselves riled up before the game. Did you hear some of the lyrics in that chant? Up oh, here comes the Lady Boxers chant. And they just jump up and down and go, hoo, 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 boxers. The lyrics more simplistic to the Brockton chant, but the message just the same. They're excited to play soccer. Number 10, Hannah Sousa in the starting lineup for Durfee. Number 11, Glenda Ortiz. Number 12, Sydney Silva. Number 14, Brianna Camara is the goalkeeper. Number 18, Isabel McDonald. Number 22, Paulina Feidelberg. And number 14, Galen O'Reilly. Uh, Matt, what did you think about each team's respective huddle and chant uh, prior to the game? Durfee's definitely got the advantage there. Uh, Durfee, what I could understand from that, we are so good, we are so psyched, let's go. We are so good. We are so psyched. Let's go. That's some positive reinforcement, if there ever was positive reinforcement, folks, as this game is now underway between the Brockton Lady Boxers and the Durfee Lady Hilltoppers. Now, this is a very important differentiation. Well, I, I'm going to not say that word again because I messed up twice already. It's very important that I differentiate what team is wearing what colors because both schools have the same colors here. The Brock Lady Boxers today are wearing the white jerseys with the black shorts. The Durfee Lady Hilltoppers are wearing the red jerseys with the black shorts. Always important to differentiate which team is which, particularly when the schools have similar colors. Right, Matt? Always. And all the, all the big three has the same color scheme. New Bedford also with the red and white. That is correct. They just don't throw black in the mix. Lucky for us. We're playing two 40-minute halves here in high school girls' soccer. When we reference how much time is left in each half, respectively, we're referencing what is on the scoreboard and what is visible to the fans here in attendance at Marciano Stadium. However... The official time is kept by the official scorers on the field. I'm going to have the first kickoff from the Durfee net. The shutdown defense for Brockton, Haley Miller and Lindsey Gomes, absolutely amazing all year. Shut down, and that's why the boxers are doing so well this year. One of many reasons the Lady Boxers are doing well this year. 
38 minutes left to go here in the first half. We were scoreless between the Brockton Lady Box and the Durfee Lady Hilltoppers. I said, kid in the backpack smirks at us as he walks by. Hello. Matt Nelson, I've noticed that your Twitter, Avi, is your high school yearbook photo. Is that something you regret? I, I don't have the highest opinion of myself sometimes. I, I'm, I'm sorry to hear that. You want me to? How about some more positive reinforcement? I want you to repeat after me. I am so good. I am psyched. Let's go. I'm so good. I'm psyched. Let's go. Do it more like the Durfee girls. Come on. I am so good. I am so psyched. Let's go. All right. That's not bad. You feel better? I, I do. I do. I might have to do that every morning when I wake up. You should. Uh, our own newbie, Rateau. Every day when he goes to work, he does a chant where he goes, work, just to get himself excited for work. And I've also heard that Newbie, when he wakes up, he looks in the mirror and he says, Newbie, how are you doing today? And then Newbie says, shut up. I ask the questions around here. I don't doubt that to be, uh, I don't doubt that at all. So back to the original question, do you like having the, the, the high school yearbook photo as your Twitter, Abby? It, it's very professional looking. I'm wearing a tie in it. Um, I don't think it's the best photo of me, uh, but it's it's by far not the worst. All right. I can accept that. I never wanted to take a yearbook photo. I remember my senior year of high school. Every time the yearbook people at the school, I just go, eh, I'll do it later. Eh, I'll do it later. So it was almost too late. I was almost not in the yearbook. Class of 2005. What were you the class of, Matt? 2011. I actually missed... They, they started taking them over the summer. And I actually missed the original date that I was supposed to have my, my picture taken because I was in Israel. And they, How was Israel? It was, it was amazing. Um, that's actually what it, where the best pictures of me were taken. I was in a wheelchair the whole time. So it was only, it was only top up. Why were you in a wheelchair? I broke my ankle. Uh, not the most heroic story of breaking ankles. I, uh, I was at a graduation party three days before I left, and, uh, and, uh, we were playing volleyball, and the ball went out of bounds, and I was chasing after it, and I couldn't stop in time, so I rolled my ankle over the volleyball, and people were standing around me for half an hour trying to figure out if my ankle was broken. I've noticed there's been a lot of leg problems happening at graduation parties I've been to. I remember one time I went to a graduation party where there was a trampoline present. Girl was jumping on the trampoline, like blew out her knee, saw her a year later walking with a cane. I've been afraid of trampolines ever since, folks. I, you know, I have to say, when I was a kid growing up, I loved trampolines, but they honestly make me nervous now. I've seen some horrific injuries on trampolines, and I just don't know how I feel about them. How do you feel about trampolines? Uh, they 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 can be fun when used the right way. You don't want to put ten people on a on a three foot trampoline and have them all jumping up and down and trying to push each other off because then people get hurt. It's to mimic WWE moves on uh, trampolines when I was in junior high, and I'm like, that's very dangerous in retrospect. I've only broken a bone twice, and it was my collarbone twice. The first time I broke my collarbone, Matt. No one knows how I broke my collarbone. I was a little kid. I was running around. I did something. I broke my collarbone. The second time I broke my collarbone, I was four years old. As Brockton may have a chance to shoot and go, ah, save. Save by the keeper for Durfee. Second time I broke my collarbone, I was four years old. The night before, I had watched this wonderful program on the NBC network called Saturday Night's Main Event which featured the main event of the Macho Man Randy Savage against Jake the Snake Roberts. And the Macho Man Randy Savage kept getting on the top rope and doing the flying elbow drop on Jake the Snake Roberts. Little four-year-old me said, I want to try a flying elbow drop of my own. And I did. Off of a desk onto a bed night, I broke my collarbone. Wow. Wow. I, c I can imagine you... I imitating WWE moves, either off a of bed or on a trampoline. But but you're pretty you're pretty limber. You you're skinny. I I could imagine you actually pulling some of those moves off. I can pull some of them off for sure. No question about it. Thirty three minutes left to go in the first half. Brockton and Durfee are still scoreless. 
What building were you in when you attended Brockenheim at? I was in the very bright, newly painted yellow building. Yeah, the yellow building was kind of old and not brightly painted when I was there. But you, you came after me, and it was, uh, it was nice and newly painted. They, they actually redid it um, when I was entering sophomore year, so I had to put up with three years of very bright sunshine yellow, I think they called it, on, on all the walls and all the, the chairs in the cafeteria were yellow, and it was, it was enough to wake someone up in the morning. We'll put it that way. Back and forth action here at Marciano Stadium tonight. Not a lot of scoring opportunities as of yet. But as we know in sports, especially high school sports, it only takes one. That's right, Matt. Only takes one. Do you realize how many songs are called one? There's like a lot of songs called one. You two have a song called one. Metallica have a song called one. The Foo Fighters have a song called the one. One really is not the loneliest number in terms of songs being called one when you think about it. A lot of artists like to do one because it's the, the first song in their, their first album. And it, it doesn't really make sense because every other artist has a song called One. Bob Marley said One Love. Let's get together and feel all right. Wise words from that man. 31 minutes left to go in the first half. We are scoreless between Brockton and the Durfee Hilltoppers. You are watching Brockton Community Access Sports. This game, most experts are predicting a Donnybrook. It's one of my favorite terms to use to describe any sporting event is a Donnybrook. It's a real Donnybrook, Matt. The, the first time I heard the word Donnybrook, I was watching a Bruins game on Nesson. And the one, the only, Jack Edwards. There was a, a massive brawl in one of the corners. And here's an opportunity for Brockton right out in front. But good defense by Durfee. So Jack Edwards was commentating a fight in one of the corners at the TD Garden. He said, we got a real Donnybrook on our hands. Everyone's got a partner. Oh, no. What a save. <laughs> Good job by the keeper for the Durfee Hilltoppers. That being Brianna Camara. Good job, Brianna. Better friends color Brie. She's not giving some of these kids nicknames. Lauren Seaver has her fan base who has the, the, the Seaver fever. We talked about that. Ariana Almeida. It's Ariana on your team. You need her. Almeida. I like that. Haley. All killer. No filler. Miller. I like that. Lindsay bringing it home. Gomes. We'll come up with more as this game goes on. I remember your time at Brockton High, Matt Nelson, because you were a part-time employee at Brockton Community Access, and everyone at BCA uh, decided to start a campaign and jump on this campaign. We wanted you to join the Brockton High wrestling team, and you never did join the wrestling team. Why did you not join the wrestling team? Uh, I, w I wasn't always the tallest kid. So uh, I was I was a little bit uh, scared of the the six foot five guys that would be attempting to hurt me and, and take me down and submit me. The reason why we want you to join the wrestling team, your logic is flawed already. We explain this to you time and time again, is because how tall are you? Right now I'm five six. Back in those days I was four ten, four eleven. You were so short. We felt that with a little physical activity, you could drop some of the lbs. How much did you weigh around that time? I believe I was 175 around that time. But you had some to lose, if you don't mind me saying. You had some to lose, didn't you? I did. I did. I will freely admit that. 
and you could have lost it with some physical activity and training, but because of the bulky nature, you'd probably just be taking on pipsqueaks and you would just dominate them. That's why we wanted you to join the wrestling team. You didn't have to face six foot five guys. There's weight divisions. There's no six foot five guys in your weight division. You could have cut down to like 145 and destroyed some skinny kids. Pin them. I like the action there. Pin them, slam on the desk. How come you never did it? I I don't know. I we tried to get you to do this time and time again, and you just never did it. I just uh, I don't have an answer for that one. I I'm not I'm not such a big big wrestling fan. None of us were, but we thought you could have dominated. I don't know about all that. Twenty-seven minutes to go here. In the first half, Brockton and Durfee are scoreless. We had a scoreless game a few weeks ago, but in the second half, ba-boom. Just opened up like you would not believe, and Brockton was just scoring all over the place. Matt, we've been following this Brockton High Lady Boxer soccer team all season long. I believe that this Brockton High Lady soccer team is going to do quite well in the postseason. How do you feel? I, I agree with you on that one. Uh, they've had excellent goaltending by uh, Lauren the Fever Seaver. Well, her fans have the Seaver Fever. Other people in the press box, would you not agree that when Lauren Seaver came out, she got a huge ovation? They have the Seaver Fever. They have the Seaver Fever. They do. Who was the girl on American Idol years ago that they had the something fever? And she was, like, doing real well. And she turned out to be anorexic after the show. I, I don't know about that. Sh hold on a moment. I'm going to look at our, one, of our, one of our former cameramen here at BCA had a massive crush on her. And I can't think of her name. Can't think of her name. Brockton High with an opportunity here. Good defense by Durfee, and we will have a corner kick, I believe. It'll be a Brockton boxer throwing. Jennifer Caruso with the ball now. The shot is wide, so we'll have a goal kick coming from the Durfee goalkeeper. Jennifer Caruso puts it out in front, but nobody was home. And an offside's called. Now, Peter, the last time we were here, there was a boys game, and we saw a few bicycle kicks, and one of them led to a goal. Bicycle kicks are spectacular when they work out. Do you have a bicycle mat at home? Do you ride the bike? I do. And any time I, I ride my bike, it makes me think of the Queen song. That's my favorite Queen song, Bicycle. I like Bicycle. There's, uh, there's a few good Queen songs that I enjoy. Jen. 
And that goes to the football uprights, but that does no one any good in soccer. Brock and I football, they've got a good kicker this year. Ryan Clifford hit a 35-yard field goal in the first game this season. You don't see field goals kick too often at the high school level outside of extra points, and even sometimes you see teams just forego the extra point and try for two. Ryan Clifford says no, 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 no. No, nay, never. He is going to uh, kick the field goal from 35 yards out in that opening game. And Brockton is famous for going for it on fourth down, trying to, trying to push that ball towards the end zone for the seven points. There's a high school football coach somewhere in the country that was profiled in HBO Real Sports that uh, never kicks, ne never punts the football away. And he has about 11 different variations of kickoffs that he does that are all onside kickoffs. He uh, does not like the kicking aspect of the game of football. Apparently it works out for him, too. That's my philosophy when I play Madden the video game. Never punt it, always go for it on fourth down. And always onside kick. I haven't played video game in probably 10 years at this point. I think the best video game ever created was NFL Football 94 starring Joe Montana. If you're the New England Patriots in that game, their running back Leonard Russell is unstoppable. You just have to do spin moves every time your defender's near you. Shot on goal, no good by Brockton. It's going to be a little bit wide, folks, a little bit wide. But we're scoreless here with 21 minutes to go in the first half. Brockton and the Durfee Hilltoppers putting forth a very competitive outing thus far in front of these fans here at Marciano Stadium watching this game on Colombo Field. Got Colombo Field here at Marciano Stadium. Colombo Field is surrounded by the Harry C. Allen track. You can always go and visit the John Waldron Snack Shack if you want some food. There's a lot of things named after people here on the confines of Marciano Stadium. Of course, there's the statue of Rocky Marciano which has been up for over a year now in the end zone to the left of us. One of our cameramen, Aaron Tebow, is sporting a T-shirt today that has all of Rocky Marciano's 49 victories recorded on the back of its T-shirt. We should do some Rocky Marciano trivia, Matt. Can we do some Marciano trivia? Let's do it. Let's go! Who did Rocky Marciano knock out to win the heavyweight championship of the world? Let's see. I know it was... Was it Jersey Joe Walcott? Jersey Joe Walcott is correct. What round did Rocky Marciano knock Jersey Joe Walcott in to win the heavyweight championship of the world? I'll give you a hint. By today's standards in boxing, he, he would have lost the decision. I think it was 8 or 12. It was the 13th round. Back then, championship fights in boxing were 15 rounds. Now they're 12 rounds. Because apparently someone decided that three extra rounds of boxing was dangerous. You know what's kind of silly about that? The entire, sp the entire sport of boxing is pretty dangerous. Let's, let's not act like it's anything other than what it is. It's guys hitting each other in the head and body, trying to hurt each other. How about more Rocky Marciano trivia? Name the former heavyweight champion he knocked out prior to fighting for the heavyweight championship of the world in what ended up being this former heavyweight champion's final fight, a Hall of Famer. I might have to consult the back of our cameraman's T-shirt. You should know this one. You should know this one. He knocked out a very famous heavyweight champion in the eighth round a few years before he won the heavyweight title himself. Uh, a national icon. I'm, I'm thinking, was it Joe Lewis? It was Joe Lewis. It was Joe Lewis indeed. You're doing well in your Rocky Marciano trivia.
What former light heavyweight champion did Rocky Marciano knock out in what was his final fight? Oh man, I'm I can't I can't think of it right now. That I'm would be that would be Archie Moore. Archie Moore had one of the coolest nicknames in the history of sports. They called him the Old Mongoose. The Old Mongoose. It's a cool nickname. My favorite nickname in the history of sports belongs to another boxer. There's a boxer named Darnell Wilson, and he was Darnell the Dingling Man Wilson because when he knocked out his opponents, uh, he rung their bell, as he said. Darnell the Dingling Man Wilson. Their heads went dingling a ling like a bell when he knocked them out. Makes sense, right? Yes. I, I see it a lot. I wa I'm a fan of the UFC, uh, so I watch a lot of MMA, and they're... When they show the instant replays, they, they record at such a high frame rate that they, uh, when they show the replays of a punch to the face, you can literally see the ripple in their skin when their face is punched. Sixteen minutes and 48 seconds left to go in the first half. We're scoreless here at Marciano Stadium. Some college recruits here taking a look at some of the fine talent on this field. Matt Nelson. Always nice to see the college scouts coming out checking out the fine talent that has to be offered at Brockton High. I was talking about Brockton High to some young people recently. And I was explaining to them the dynamics of Brockton High. They, they, they said to me that they, they'd heard Brockton High was not a good school. And I said that, that that's not true. Nothing could be further from the case. Brockton High is a school with upwards of 5,000 students. And with 5,000 students, you get the best of the best, and you get more of the best than you would at other schools. But, you know, because there's a large quantity of people, you know, you get some of the bad as well. Is that a fair way to say it? That is. And with so many students, they have enough of a, an awesome curriculum to have all the extracurricular programs like the band, the award-winning Brockton High Band, marching, the jazz band, good as always this year. They have the chorus. They have the television production uh, club. They have the photography club. They have the nursing club. Too much to go off the top of my head. I can't even name all the different clubs and activities they have to do. As it's Pretty extensive to say the least, Mr. Matt Nelson. Pretty extensive to say the least. At Brockton High. Brockton maneuvering the ball rather well. Could be a shot on goal forthcoming. Could be a shot on goal. It's going to go out of bounds. We, we, we asked the other people in the press box, was my synopsis of Brockton High, was that accurate? Was that accurate? Because, well, because you have 5,000 kids in the school, you get more of the good. I mean, so what? You get more of the bad as well. It's offset by the good you get. Am I right? You know what? She gets it. The other folks here in the press box get it. So I was saying to these youngins that I was talking to. I was talking to the youngins at the school I teach at, Matt Southeastern Regional. A fine school. A fine school indeed. I mean, any school that I teach at is a, is a fine school. I mean, it's the best high school around because of my presence, Matt. Let's 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 be honest. I, I mean, you know, I, I I teach there. You know, this is what it is. But you, you lend your artistic skills for the voice of Brockton High Sports. Yeah, I don't take credit for being anything involved in soccer. I don't really know what I'm watching, so I just talk to you. You know, you know something interesting about the stadium, the bleachers and whatnot? They were built by the students at Southeastern Regional. Did you know that? I didn't know that. That's a very, very fun fact. Uh, the students at Southeastern Regional in one of the construction programs bought these, uh, constructed these bleachers. And a fine job they did. We've been using these bleachers for many years. 13 minutes left to go here in the first half.
Stockton moving the ball down the field. Moving the ball down the field. Trying to think, I'm looking at members of our crew. It looks like a lot of our members of our crew went to Brockton High. I went to Brockton High, graduated. You went to Brockton High, graduated. Aaron Tebow went to Brockton High, graduated. Nubi Rateau went to Brockton High, and graduated. Our director went to Colonel Spellman, however. His parents thought he was a bad boy and it needed, needed the, the wrath of God to uh, make him right. And uh, he's a good man now, so perhaps they were right. I don't think it worked 100%. Well, I mean, it worked to the extent that he's a contributing member to society, which is, you know, really all you need. And he 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 is a contributing member of society, but there's a little a little bit of devil in him, just a little bit though, enough to make it funny. It's Paul Man Deville, that's his name. There you go. It's all in the name. Paul Man Deville. Paul Mandeville, if he doesn't scare you, no evil thing will. Because he's Paul, Paul Mandeville. Like Coella Deville in the 101 Dalmatians. You ever see that movie? I did. That that was uh, a good chunk of my, my childhood was Disney movies. Wasn't it cool back in the day Disney movies, like the adults in the Disney movies would be smoking cigarettes and pipes and stuff? You don't have that in kids programming anymore. You did back in 101 Dalmatians though. Well, now you've got the the jump from innocent cartoons to what I call teenage programming, which actually starts at like age ten, and it's Disney Channel, and there's violence and what is there violence on the Disney Channel? There is. I haven't watched it recently, but but. And by the way, who's to say that's a bad thing? But when is there violence on the Disney Channel? I the last time I watched it. A, a, probably a year or two ago. Like last night, be honest. Okay, it was, it was like this morning. But uh, there was there was a show, I forget what it was, but there were there were people playing mean practical jokes on each other and, and beating up on each other and stuffing e- each other into lockers and, and all that kind of stuff. Probably in a cartoonish way. Are we watching reruns of Boy Meets World? Quite possibly. Okay. I mean, some Disney movies are pretty heavy. I mean, you, you watch The Lion King when Mustafa dies. It's a pretty heavy scene for kids right there. But you know what? Death is a part of life. It's the circle of life. It all goes to do with the cartoon. I mean, you can't just have, it, have the whole movie be, you know, fun times and gummy bears and lollipops, right? Gummy bears are, are fine with me. Yeah, but that can't be the whole movie. That'd be a p- pretty bland movie. I, I just got an idea. Didn't Bambi get shot? I, th- I think Bambi did get shot. Right? So go Bambi on. dies. It's just part of life. I mean, you know, it's just... That's right. Old Deller, old Yeller not only dies, but the, do- the boy has to shoot Old Yeller because he has rabies. If you never saw Old Yeller, I just spoiled that for you. But, I mean, it's just, you know... Who hasn't seen Old Yeller? I read the book when I was in fifth or sixth grade, then watched the movie in school. Fifth and sixth grades where they start introducing books to the kids that don't always have happy endings. Because they need to know that life doesn't always turn the way you want it to be. Remember watching, what was it, something Gilly Hopkins? What am I thinking of? Anyone? The Great Gilly Hopkins? Is that a book? About a girl that wants the acceptance of her biological mother and then she meets her mother and her mother does not accept her. She's basically like smoking cigarettes and says, get out of my life. A sad ending to that book, but... Sometimes happens in the real world. You ever read The Giver? I have not. Okay, The Giver has the worst ending to any book I've ever read because it, ju- it ju- just ends and you have to th- think for yourself what the ending's going to be like. I was so upset, I took the book and I threw it across the room because it was a good book up until that point. The Giver. Well, there's some where there's the violence in the middle and it turns out to be a happy ending. Have you ever seen the movie Pay It Forward? No, I never heard of it. It is a very well put together movie. I strongly advise you to watch it. It is my mother's Roz Nelson. It is her favorite movie of all time. My favorite movie of all time is Ferris Bueller's Day Off. 
I don't know what that says about me. You're just fun loving. That's that's it. I'm a fun loving guy. I can probably quote every line in the movie Ferris Bueller's Day Off. What is your favorite Disney movie, Matt? My favorite Disney movie. I'm gonna have to go with the entire Toy Story series. Yeah, mine's either Toy Story or Aladdin, I have to say. Disney Channel coming out with the Toy Story of Terror. It's a, it's going to be a TV series premiering this month on, on the Disney Channel. The fact that you know that makes me believe you watch a lot of Disney Channel. And you were trying to play it off like two minutes ago like, yeah, no, when I watch Disney Channel. But now I think that you watch a lot of Disney Channel. It was on Channel 5 in the news because everyone w- was so taken aback that Toy Story was going to be a TV series. Well, I, I might have to pay attention to this. Are they going to have Tim Allen and Tom Hanks do the voices? Or are they going to have someone else do the voices? Because I remember when they made Aladdin a TV series. It wasn't like Robin Williams and the regular people doing the voices because they just couldn't afford them. Is that going to be the case with the TV series? Or are they, are they paying Tim Allen and Tom Hanks? I hope they are, just because y- you can't mess with classics. When you think of Buzz Lightyear and Woody, you think of Tim Allen and Tom Hanks. You know, in the second Aladdin movie, it was not Robin Williams doing the voice because he had a big dispute with Disney executives over some business dealings. It was the guy who does the voice for Homer Simpson in the second Aladdin. By the way, Aladdin, after the first one, that series just went downhill. Aladdin 2, The Return of Jafar was junk, and I don't remember what the third one was called. Six minutes to go here in the first half. We're still scoreless between Brockton and Durfee. Then you've got Aladdin 4, Jafar may need glasses. That's the Family Guy joke, isn't it? Yes. All right. I was going to say, there was no Aladdin 4, was there? be crazy. You know what else is pretty weak? Off the post. Oh, shot on goal perhaps at Brockton? No, no, no. Out of bounds. You know, Disney has a habit of coming out with really good opening animated features, and you're like, wow, this is great. And then they really do a very poorly done sequel, and they know internally that it's terrible. So they just release it direct to video and sell it to kids who are going to get their parents to buy it. You ever see Pocahontas 2? It's awful. There's a Pocahontas 2? There's a Pocahontas 2. Haven't seen it and I probably never will. Pocahontas might be like the last of the classic Disney animated movies from the 90s, I think. After that, I mean, what else did what else they have? I don't know. In the the 90s, it was predominantly the the Toy Stories. Yeah, Toy Story, The Lion King, Aladdin, The Little Mermaid, Beauty and the Beast. And after that, it was like, whatever. And then the the 2000s were off and running. You got Finding Nemo, I believe, in 2003. That was was an excellently put-together movie. You ever think the plot of Beauty and the Beast is kind of weird when you think about it? I do. It, it's very weird when you think about it. And a good opportunity there for the box is broken up by the strong defense of the Durfee Hilltoppers. Both teams have a strong defense as we are scoreless with just over four minutes to go in the first half. Very scoreless. And there hasn't been many scoring chances either. It's been all defense. Yeah, both these teams doing a solid job of defending the goal. What's your favorite Disney song, Matt? Disney song. I'm going to have to go with going back to Toy Story. You've got a friend in me. You've got a friend in me. Let's go to the other people in the press box. What is your favorite Disney song? The thinking. This is a tough one. When You Wish Upon a Star from Pinocchio. Matt, I'll, I'll, I'll uh, give this factoid out to you. We, we talked recently for some reason on this broadcast, and I don't know why we talk about anything in these broadcasts that we do, but we do. Uh, Nubi Rateau did not know who Brian Wilson was, which, you really? know, he didn't know who Brian Wilson was. Really? Anyways, Brian Wilson of the Beach Boys heard When You Wish Upon a Star and Pinocchio loved the melody so much that he 
took that melody and kind of stole it to write the song Surfer Girl. Did you ever know the song Surfer Girl? If you listen to it back to back with When You Wish Upon a Star, it's kind of like the same same vibe. I didn't notice that. I'm, I'm going to have to try that the second I get home. It's true. It's true. When you wish upon a star Little sir See, it's the same thing. Now, here's another little factoid about Brian Wilson and the Beach Boys. When they released Pet Sounds, Paul McCartney and the Beatles thought that it was such an amazing album as a whole that the entire album of Sgt. Pepper and the Lonely Hearts Club Band was trying to imitate Brian Wilson. He's trying to outdo them. Trying to outdo them. Here's, here's, here's another Brian Wilson factoid. He released an entire album of Disney covers. It was called In the Key of Disney. He did a version of um, You Got a Friend in Me on there. He did One You Wish Upon a Star. He did songs from The Little Mermaid and Pocahontas. He was rocking it. Corner kick for Brockton. Corner kick for Brockton. Shot on goal. Not yet, not yet, not yet. Montrand. Knocked out. Good defense again. Durfee's defense staying strong. Definitely the ball has been in, in Durfee's defensive zone more than Brockton's. But Durfee's defense staying strong, keeping their goaltender energized. Less than two minutes to go here in the half. We're scoreless, Brockton and Durfee. A few weeks ago I had a dream that I was at a carnival and there was a lot of clowns around and uh, the Beatles Sergeant Peppers was playing and it was really creepy. That same night I also had a dream that Scar from The Lion King was on inside the active studio talking as if he was an actor who was in that movie. But now Durfee's got a chance for a goal. Lawrence Seaver comes out. Oh, the Seaver fever continues. What a save by the keeper. Our, goal, our, our cameraman, Aaron Tebow, is imitating Scott Zolak from the Patriots game this past Sunday, saying, That's your goalie! That's your goalie! Where's the beef? Lauren Seaver exhibiting why many fans in attendance have the Seaver fever. She should get t-shirts made up that say Seaver fever and give them to all her friends and they can wear it at school and they will know that they have the Seaver fever. I think you could get a side job as a consulting uh, a consultant, I should say. You just come up with the greatest ideas. Well, thank you. I want to write commercial jingles. I'm going to let anyone out there know that owns a business that uh, I'm available to write commercial jingles. Contact me at p.zimbor at hotmail.com. That's what I really want to do, man. I just want to sit around my house with my guitar and a keyboard and write commercial jingles. Anytime I think of people writing commercial jingles, I think of Uncle Jesse and Joey Gladstone from Full House. They wrote some awesome, awesome commercial jingles on that show. They did one for the gym. Remember? They were like, you're going to put down the shake and not going to be real fat now. You know, that was a good one. First half comes to a conclusion. Brockton and Durfee are scoreless here at Colombo Field at Marciano Stadium. You're watching BCA Sports. We'll be back in a flash, folks for second half action. Stick with us. It's easy to tell if you've had way too many. But what if you've had just one too many? Buzz driving is trunk driving. Marciano Stadium, as the second half between the Brockton Lady Boxers and the Durfee Lady Hilltoppers has begun, we are still scoreless here on the campus of Brockton High School. Peter Zimbor and Matt Nelson calling the action. Now Matt Nelson is standing by with some members of the Brockton High boys varsity soccer team who apparently were victorious in the road game earlier today. Matt, take it away. All right, we have with us Jason Santos, Camden Frederick, Anderson Defina. All right, guys, you were victorious. Who scored the goals? Uh, me, Jason Santos, and Kevin Fortz. Kevin Fortz. 
And uh, we've got Cam Fredericks. Yep. I see you blazing all over the field. There's a, a trail of smoke behind you. How'd you get so fast? Uh, this, yeah, I don't know. This, oh, Kevin Forbes. Kevin, he's going. We're, we're joined now by Kevin Forts, the second goal scorer. He's a little bit microphone shy. Kevin, take us through your goal. Um, um, it first started by me missing a penalty shot, but I know that didn't put me down, so kept my head up in the game. Camden got um, this free kick, and I got the rebound, and that's how I got the first goal. And our team um, kept playing. It would never stop, and then... Got to score another goal by Jason Santo, and he ran the whole field like crazy. I was a lucky goal, by the way. My name is Eric, and Ray, I play right back. You already know, number five, it's your boy. You know, come support us. Twenty second versus New Bedford. You know, six o'clock. You know, you know, you know. All right, six o'clock, October twenty second. What are your thoughts on on the game here so far tonight at Marciano Stadium? Uh, you know, the girls looking great out there, you know. Just need one more goal, just need a goal to finish it off against the Durfee team. And, you know, come and support us on Tuesday against New Bedford, you know. If we win this game of Big 3 champs, so trying to take it home. All right, ladies and gentlemen, the Brockton High Boxers boys varsity soccer team. We have a final thought. Shout out to Amanda. Hey, yo, shout out to the Blazers team, let's get it! Shout out Blazers, shout out, shout out to Bye, All right, Thursday, uh, Tuesday, October 22nd, Brockton High versus New Bedford. We will be here, and we hope you will be here as well. That was an interesting shout-out. They shouted out Amanda. Apparently Amanda's popular amongst the soccer team. We're scoreless here with 37 minutes left to go in the second half. Shout-out to who else? This guy's got a shout-out. Who, who else? No, no, come tell me. Just tell me. Shout out to who, my friend? Blazes. Who's the Blazes? Club team. Club team. Club team. All right. Shout out to the Blazers, folks. Thought I was talking about the Portland Trail Blazers for a moment, but uh, that was not the case. That would be a unique shout out. Look at this. Matt Nelson is giving out business cards over here. I did not know Matt Nelson had business cards. He feels very important, folks. You should see this. We'll talk to the official scorekeeper. Does it not appear that Matt Nelson is looking very important with a business card? Yes, extremely important. Matt Nelson, when did you get a business card? BCA graciously gave me business cards right before we went to the regional media conference in it let's see where it was uh new jersey let me see if i can think of the town was it teaneck it was not teaneck newark it was not newark it was right near rutgers jersey city it was not jersey city atlantic city it was not atlantic city i was in atlantic city last summer dropped twenty dollars on the blackjack table left like four hours later 400 it was like the best day ever Wow, I, sh I should bring you to Vegas when I'm old enough. You can go to Vegas at any time. Vegas is a fun place. I've not been there since 2009. I have to get back there. Shot on goal! Oh! What just happened? What just happened? What was just scored? What was just scored? Come on, buddy, help us out. What was scored? Ah, golasso! I rematzo. It was a goal. Jen Caruso with the goal. You know, we had Jennifer Caruso in the booth with us during a boys' game a few weeks ago. Jennifer Caruso, I have to say, is incredibly well spoken. Very intelligent girl.
That goes counts, right? Oh, yeah. That counts, right? Oh, yeah. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Get back. Get back, go. Yeah, I don't know if anyone heard Jennifer Caruso on our broadcast during the boys game, but she's a very well-spoken girl. She's very intelligent. Actually, we interviewed her last game, too. Uh, Manny Almeida was my broadcast partner for that one, and, and Jen Caruso came in from her game, and we she was gracious enough to give us an interview. Give that girl a radio show. Put her in front of a mic. She's actually very good. We should have her announce the boys' games. We really should. We should. I'm, I'm throwing the idea out there that Jen Caruso should do the commentary for boys' varsity soccer games. As long as she does not have a game of her own that same night, there's no reason she should not be in the booth. I, I agree with that. She can, she can have my job. She, she can commentate the soccer games when she is available. She's a good athlete. She played basketball on the varsity team as a freshman. And Jen Caruso scoring goals left and right. I think you should invite her to be on your radio show, PM in the AM. Yeah, we don't really do the whole high school thing on PM in the AM. Sorry, Jen. We've got some eccentric guests on Monday. Let's hear them. No, I'm not going to mention them. I'm not, I'm not mentioning them. It's a high school broadcast. You're gonna make me listen to the. You're gonna make me wake up early and listen to your broadcast Monday morning. We always have unique guests on our show. One of the best of which. There, there were a couple of good ones in a row. There, there was Ted Nugent who made national news. That's right. Ted Nugent's coming back on my show, by the way. Really. Ted Nugent is coming back on PM in the AM. It's going to be his triumphant return after the last time he was on our show when our interview went national that day. That was the craziest day ever. I went home, went to sleep, woke up, and uh, my interview with Ted Nugent was on NBC. That, that was a very crazy day. I remember everyone was like, oh, Ted Nugent was on, on Pete's show. And I was like, what? And then I went to Yahoo, and on the front page of Yahoo... It, yeah, it was my interview with Ted Nugent was on the front page of Yahoo. Yes. Yahoo, NBC, the Huffington Post. It went crazy. And then people started calling me like, hey, do you know you're on NBC? And I'm like, yeah, yeah. Everyone else was telling me. And then there was Dana White right before the UFC event in Boston. Yeah, that was cool, but that didn't get, that didn't get on NBC. That actually got on Fox Sports, though. Go, 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 go. Shot on goal attempt for Durfee. Oh, open net, but Brockton's going to kick it out. Good job by the defenders! What an aggressive save by Lauren. Gives everyone... Well, it wasn't just Lauren. I gotta say, Lauren didn't quite save that. That was a lot of her defenders knocking it out of there. That was a good team effort. There's no I in team. T-E-A-M, team. I won the spelling bee in third grade and then again in eighth, I know. 30 minutes to go. In the game and Brockton leads 1-0 thanks to that Jennifer Crusoe goal. You ever go to the Spelling Bee Championships at the Little Red Schoolhouse across the way? I, I was in the Little Red Schoolhouse Spelling Bee Championships when I was in seventh grade. Is that place used for anything else but the Spelling Bee Championships? Like, what's the purpose of the Little Red Schoolhouse's existence if it wasn't for Spelling Bee Championships? Maybe there's something else. I just don't know. They have tours. I believe it's twice a month. It is a historical landmark. But beyond that, I can't imagine the tours go too long. There's only three rooms. There is a historical society here in Brockton, which is open like once a month or something on a Sunday for like three hours. First and third Sunday of every month. It's a really happening place if you ever go. You can look at shoes from like the 1940s. They actually have a pair of shoes from President Bill Clinton. I did know that. I did know that. They have some shoes that are like entombed. I don't know if that's the right word. In gold. I... I would use enshrined in gold. Enshrined in gold. There's some cool historical facts about Brockton that you can learn through the Brockton Historical Society. They do a fine job. There's also some complete and utter nonsense that's just spoken about by people in Brockton. Encased in gold. Encased in gold. You know what I don't like hearing? I don't like hearing the catcher's mitt was invented in Brockton. That's just not true. I don't know about that one. It, it may be true, but... 
then again, so many people. No, no, no. Like a bunch of people simultaneously at the same time said, "Why aren't we wearing gloves as catchers on a baseball field? This hurts our hands. Baseballs are hard." And they started doing different things to like soften the blow. So it wasn't like the guy from Brockton invented the catcher's mitt. That's well, that's that's kind of that that's just it's a myth, is what it is. It, it might have been that catchers were using regular baseball gloves. Nah. I don't know. The only people that believe that the catcher's mitt was invented in Brockton are people in Brockton. Well, that that's the same way everywhere. You could, you could say that the first soda was invented in Comcast, Texas. Maybe it was. I got a trivia question for you. That has to do with Brockton. As Brockton is allowing this girl to get through from Durfee. She'll have a shot on goal, but no! Going to be wide to the right. Good defense with the slide tackle breaking that up. Good defense indeed. Mike. Excuse me, Mike. Matt. Matt, there are three people from Brockton in the International Boxing Hall of Fame. Who are those three people? I'm going to have to go with Rocky Marciano. That is one. Marvelous Marvin Hagler. That is two. The third one's the hard one. Of course. The, the third one is the only one without their jersey on Campanelli Stadium's walls. The third one would be Arthur Mercanti, who was the referee, I believe, in the third fight between Muhammad Ali and Joe Frazier. He's in the International Boxing Hall of Fame, and he's from Brockton. So there's three Brocktonians in the, in the International Boxing Hall of Fame. 27 minutes to go in this game. Brockton leads Durfee by a score of one to nothing. Folks, we told you at the top of the broadcast this one would be a Donny Brook in. Well, this one's been as Donny of a Brook as there ever has been. That says it all right there. This has been the most Donny of a Brook that it can be. I think that's an Irish term, Donny Brook. What's your favorite traditional Irish song, Matt? Traditional Irish song. I don't know how traditional it is, but I'm going to go with Tessie from the Dropkick Murphys. Yeah, that's not a traditional Irish song at all, so that would not count. Shot on goal. Oh, no, 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 no. Just wide to the right. I was going to say, like, uh, so lonely round the fields. Of Athen Rye. That's like a traditional Irish song. I once turned on the radio and I hit the seek button, which is always a good idea if you want to listen to some random stuff. And it stopped on a station that was playing Irish rock music at one in the morning. That's a cool story, bro. 26 minutes to go in the first half. One time I was driving through New Hampshire, like in the White Mountains, and I hit the seek button. In every station was either Christian rock or country. That's about as interesting as your story. That sounds like a nightmare. I heard that song. Our God is an awesome God. He does some awesome things. I don't remember the part beyond that, but you know what song I'm talking about? I do. I do know that song. Someone wrote a song called Awesome God about how awesome their God is. It doesn't surprise me. Have you seen the billboards all over the place that say, Try God? I have. I have. It's an AM station. It's a Catholic station, and uh, they're, they're, they're pretty heavy with their marketing campaign. I work for another AM station, so uh, we don't support them here. Okay, buddy boy? Okay. I was, I was just asking. You know, WFHT in Florida, the sister station of WXBR in Brockton, just got their new morning show, and it's Steve Harvey hosting the morning show. They decided to syndicate Steve Harvey to FHT. Really? Steve Harvey's got his own show. I listened to it this week. Steve Harvey does a Battle of the Sexes bit. He does a Horoscopes bit. He does a Celebrity Birthdays bit. He does all the morning show staples. I don't think it has anything on WXBR's PM and the AM. That's right. That's right. That guy's got a few more, a few more bank accounts than myself, however. He's got, he's, he's, he's got a few more bucks in the bank account than Steve Harvey. I'll tell you that much. Talking, if we're talking quality of radio broadcast, that's right. PM and the AM on 10, 
1060. I'm thinking of the, the Catholic channel. 1460, the new WXBR, is one of the best radio broadcasts of, of her ever. That was a good save by the Durfee goalkeeper there. Got a nice little polite golf clap from those in attendance. Despite the fact that she's on the opposing team, they're like, yeah, that's pretty good. Pretty good. That's actually the soccer version of golf clap. It's a little bit louder, but not by much. That's the soccer clap. What's your favorite movie about soccer? Ooh. I don't know. Bend it like Beckham, perhaps? I haven't seen that one. I have not seen that one. What's your favorite song about soccer? Favorite song about soccer? Uh, it's got to be one of the ones that Brockton High plays for the warm-ups here at Marciano Stadium. I like the Cup of Life by Ricky Martin. It's about the World Cup. It's the Cup of Life. Ole, ole, ole. Waka Waka is not bad. But she can't. That's, oh, here we go. Breakaway by Derpy. The shot. Shot on goal, and we've got a tie game, folks. Tie game. Derpy ties the game with 23 minutes left to go. Can they all collectively give that girl a hug so we know which one it was? Which one was it? The blonde girl way out on the other side. Turn around so we can see your number. They're going to just say Gold Durfee on the PA system. We're going to listen in. Oh, we're not going to say that. 1-1 one, one is your score. Durfee test the game. Brockton. Brockton. Trying to get the lead back again. Trying to get the lead back again. Oh, wide to the right. Wide to the right. Wide to the right. Whistled offsides, however. Yes, uh, that was whistled off sides. Nobody heard it, so the shot went off anyway. You caught me right as I'm trying to tweet the scoring update here from Marciano Stadium. BCA is now on Twitter, Peter. Yes, I know this, at, Brockton, at the Brockton channels on Twitter. I follow. 1-1 is your score between Brockton and Durfee. 21 minutes left to go in the game here at Colombo Field at Rocky Marciano Stadium. You're watching BCA Sports, Lady Boxers Soccer. Peter Zimborn, Matt Nelson calling the action high at top Colombo Field here in the press box. You know, we've been, we've been very lucky this fall that in this press box, the glass panels that go in the windows have not gone in yet. And the heat has not been turned on yet. We've been very lucky with the weather. It's been very cooperative. That makes me happy. Does it make you happy, Matt? It makes me ecstatic. To our official scorekeeper, how ecstatic are you that the weather has been, uh, you know, reasonable? I'm thrilled. <laughs> We're all very happy with the current weather predicament, folks. Do you remember years ago, we did a football game, and it was below... Zero with the wind chill, and we had a cameraman up top for the first half. He came down at halftime and said, guys, I'm not going to lie to you. I'm not going back up there. There's just no way in hell I'm going back up there. He was wearing like a ski mask and layers, and still, no. Was that Mike Tremblay? That was Mike Tremblay. Mike Tremblay, famous for his... What, what are you going to say? Whatmike8.com. Yeah, he had a website called WhatMike8.com talking about different foods that uh, he enjoyed. Mike, the only person I know that once traveled to Maine for hot dogs and on his way home went to Amherst for tacos. He's a guy that enjoyed uh, fine cuisine. My favorite story of, of Blah, as we call him, was he... he Are we gonna tell, I don't know if we should tell the, our favorite Blah stories. Oh, uh, this, this one's clean. He went to the subway when subway existed on Main Street. And... He had a voucher for a free sub. I love the story. But he ordered double meat, and, and he figured that since it's a free sub, why not? And when he went to check his pockets, he couldn't find his wallet. And thus, no coupon, no cash, nothing to pay. You're getting the story for. wrong. I Tell it, Peter. Okay. He went to Subway. He had eaten 12 subs at Subway, and the 13th sub was free, according to this like sub coupon he had. And he went there to get his free sub. 
And they said, he said, I'd like double meat in my sandwich. They said, well, that's actually going to cost you if you have the double meat. You have to pay for the double meat. And he said, okay. So he gets the sub, and they go, it's good time to pay. He didn't have any cash on him. So he went across the street to an ATM, forgot his ATM card, and uh, decided that he couldn't go back and get his free sub. And they made a giant sub for nothing, and he never ate it. My favorite blast story involves him at a bus stop. And uh, that, that one I'm not going to tell on the air, but that's the greatest story in the history of stories. Woo, a girl from Durfee takes a bit of a spill, but we have a one-to-one -one game here with 18 minutes left to go. So that was number nine, Jordan Govin, who got that goal for Durfee earlier on, making it 1-1. Now we get the PA announcement. Ah, <laughs> PA and broadcast. Durfee goal was scored by number nine, Jordan Govin. And the Durfee fans cheer upon that announcement. Durfee located in Fall River, Massachusetts. Do you like Fall River as a place, Matt? It's not bad. It's not bad. Fall River has a PAL hall. There's a few different schools in Fall River. There's Durfee. There's like a Votech over there as well. I forget the name of that school. Diamond. Diamond. Yes, Diamond Regional. They lost to Southeastern in football last week. Division Four football at its finest. Brockton with an opportunity to score. Shot and goal. Oh, oh, oh. Peter, I just got butt dialed from one of our cameramen. Who would that be? That would be the one, the only, Mike the Postman Simmons. Why is Mike the Postman? Is it because he always delivers? He always delivers. Mike Simmons, soon to be a member of the Sunshine State, as uh, far as I know. We will miss his presence here in the Bay State. You know, Massachusetts actually isn't even a state. It's a commonwealth. Why don't they call us the Bay Commonwealth? You ever think about these things? I, I don't, but now that I think of it, you're right. Which begs the question, how many states are there actually in the United States? Hmm. Well, you know, it's 50, but, you know, we're a commonwealth. Shot. That's going to be wide to the left. 15 minutes left to go, folks. We are tied up between Brockton and Durfee. Brockton High, their head coach is Andrea Tassinari, doing a fine job in her 13th year as head coach for the Lady Boxers program. Her assistants are Rob Texera, Denise Venucci, Jack McCarrick. Of course, the athletic director for Brockton High is William Devon. He's been the athletic director for two or three years at this point. Three years, he took over for Tom Kenny, good friend of ours who we still see from time to time. Tom Kenny's now the new athletic director in East Bridgewater. The Vikings, temporarily. temporarily. East Bridgewater is so small, that's got to be easy coming from Brockton. I mean, really. What do they get, like 30 kids in that school? 
East Bridgewater doesn't even exit off the highway, okay? This broadcast is not going to East Bridgewater, so I'll say what I want. Remember a few years ago, there was a kid from East Bridgewater that had a video go viral on YouTube? He had a rap song called Welcome to the Bridge. Welcome to the bridge. I might have to YouTube that. I knew a girl in East Bridgewater, and she had horses in her backyard. She now moved to Georgia. She moved to Georgia. I want to ask your opinion on this, Matt. She moved to Georgia, and she's been there for a few years, and she broke up with her boyfriend recently. So on Facebook, it said she is now single. Was it appropriate of me to click like? He's with thinking. That, with that, it depends whether or not you liked her boyfriend. What? Were you I never met the guy. Boyfriend? I just think it's cool she's single again. Now, when people post, like, I miss you to a dead relative, or that one of their family or pets passed away, and someone clicks like, I don't think that's appropriate. Yeah, there's a lot of weird stuff on Facebook. Someone's like, man... My uncle died today, and someone clicks like. It's like, that's weird. I was at a funeral this morning. It's weird. Everyone's on Facebook now. My grandma's on Facebook. My grandma's on Facebook more than me. Shot on goal, perhaps coming for Brockton. For Brockton, shot on goal. Oh, knocked out by the goalkeeper. Good save by the keeper. It makes sense that my grandma is so into Facebook. I think that people who are retired, like they want to keep in touch with their friends and they're just on Facebook all day playing games with each other. I didn't know my grandma knew how to turn on a computer until recently. And now she's playing games on Facebook and telling me, you know, how to link things. A lot of time on your hands to to be wasting it on Facebook. You've got your morning show. That's right. And then you teach. That's right. And then, then I come here. And then and then you come here to be the voice of Brock and High Sports. Tomorrow, I'm doing my morning show from 6 a.m. to 9 a.m. I'm teaching at Southeast and Regional until 2:30. Then I'm doing the Southeast and Regional football game from 4:30 till about 6:30. Then I'm coming here and doing the Brock and High game from 7 to whenever that ends. Then I'm gonna sleep all weekend, folks. Oh, here we go, here we go, here we go. Here we go, here we go. Out of bounds. You have another job, Matt. You work at, uh, is it Models or Dick's Sporting Goods? Dick's Sporting Goods. How is that Dick's Sporting Goods treating you? It's good. It, it was pretty quiet today. I actually was working there right before I came here. Uh, so I can understand the whole sleep all weekend. But you can't sleep all weekend. We got a couple of big games this weekend. I'll be up by Sunday at 1 for the Patriots and the Jets. Well, what about Saturday night? You got the Red Sox and Tigers. All right, I'll be awake for that too. And then you can sleep in between. Yeah, it's precisely. When I promoted a boxing show in Dorchester last May, I probably slept for about the next 48 hours. I went all out that week, making sure everything was right for that show. Slept. Dropped some people off the airport. Coming home, stopped off at the Kowloon, had a Mai Tai, took one sip and was like, I can go to sleep right now. You ever go to the Kowloon on Route 1? Route 1 in Saugus. I feel like everyone in the world's been there when you look at the posters on the wall. I'd like to go in there someday and run to Jerry Seinfeld. That'd be cool. Now, Route 1 is famous for one of the best pizza places ever. And what, what would this be? Prince Pizzeria. World famous, very delicious. I, I strongly recommend you go. I'll have to check it out one of these days. You'll know it the second you see it. It's got a leaning tower of Pisa outside. I, I've seen it. I've driven by it. I'm told similar to Cape Cod Pizza. We had some Cape Cod Cafe calzones earlier today, didn't we? We did. Uh, one of my favorites from there, the Italian calzone ham salami cheese all the veggies and extra marinara sauce on the side. We got less than 10 minutes to go in this game, folks. We're tied up at one. One of these two teams must separate themselves from the other team, and we must have a victor before we leave. 
Or at least that's what we desire. That result would be desirable. Closure is what is needed at the end of sporting events. Now, do we have ties because it is a big three game? It would still be a tie, my friend. Still be a tie. Speaking of ties, I had to tie a tie this morning. I realize that I'm 26 years old, and I really don't know how to properly tie a tie. It was, you know, a humbling moment for me. I'm glad I'm not the only one. I actually didn't know how to tie a tie until election night of last year. I went to YouTube and watched a how-to video, how to tie a tie, and tried it like three times, and I finally got it. See, I'm, I'm not the only one. I did the exact same thing. You know, ties are going out of style, folks. Shot on goal. Oh, wide to the left. Just a hair. Game of inches, folks. Game of inches. You know, there was recently a big convention of tie salesmen in the United States. I'm not making this up. And wearing a tie to this convention was optional. If that's not a sign that the tie industry is like throwing in the towel and saying ties are going out, I don't know what is. When their own salesmen aren't going to wear ties, it's over. Maybe they just decided to loosen their tie and relax for a weekend. They didn't decide to loosen their tie and relax, decided not to wear them at all. Like, how are we going to sell these things? We don't want to wear them. You know who never wore a tie but always rocked a cool suit? Was uh, Uncle Jesse on Full House. Recently on the late night show with Jimmy Fallon, Jesse and the Rippers. When it comes to John Stamos' bands and Full House, who do you like better, Jesse and the Rippers or Hot Daddy and the Monkey Puppets? Jesse and the Rippers is an overall better band, but Hot Jesse and the Monkey Puppets definitely a better name. It was Hot Daddy and the Monkey Puppets. We'll go to our official scorer, who's also a connoisseur of Full House episodes. It's Brockton's a shot on goal. Saved by, saved by Durfee. It'll be a corner kick. So when it comes to full house bands of Uncle Jesse, do you like Jesse and the Rippers better or Hot Daddy and the Monkey Puppets? Jesse and the Rippers. Jesse and the Rippers did have that song forever that they sang about Uncle Jesse's twin sons. And the Beach Boys recorded that as well. Oh, it was originally a Beach Boys song. Corner kick for Brockton, and it's going to be knocked out by Durfee. Here's a trivia question for you. Who sang lead on the original Beach Boys recording of Forever? Ooh. I want to say that it was one of the Wilson brothers. All right, that narrows it down to three. Who was it? Was it Carl? It was not Carl. Who sang lead on the original Beach Boys recording of Forever in the 70s? We go to the official scorekeeper. He said Carl Wilson. He was wrong. Not a clue. It was Dennis, the drummer. Dennis Wilson. That was my next guess. I didn't have, I didn't have many choices remaining because the question was too obvious to be Brian Wilson. No, it wasn't Brian. It wasn't Carl. It was Dennis. When Mike Love came to my radio show, after he left the radio show, we... Uh, we, we we created a certain game that involved Mike Love interviews. Every time Mike Love mentions a song he wrote, take a drink of something. You'd be very sober. No, you wouldn't. He mentions how many songs he wrote like every five seconds. Oh, it's Shot on goal by Durfee. Coming up. Oh! oh what a save by the keeper. The Siva fever is contagious. I thought you said how many songs Mike Love wrote, not how many times he refers to a song that he wrote. Well, he wrote a lot of their songs with Brian, but he wrote them. Another shot on goal. Off the bottom of the football goalpost. And that goes over the net. Woo! Big momentum shift here. You can cut the tension with a butter knife. Suzanne DeFalco was making her way up the steps. That's how intense this game has gotten.
Folks, we now welcome into the broadcast Suzanne DeFalco. Suzanne, with the game tied at one with just over four minutes remaining in this divisional matchup, big three teams, Brockton and Durfee, can you feel the intensity that permeates throughout the stadium? I, I can. I just arrived to the stadium, and with a tie game like this, it's uh, the big three league. It's very exciting. Obviously, you know, neither one of them wants it to end in a tie. They want to walk away with a win. Brockton's already 2-0 and in the big three, so to be at 3-0 and pretty much ensures that they win the big three at this point. In sports as in life, I think closure is very important. The tie does not give anyone a sense of closure. We want one of these two teams to emerge victorious, and of course our viewers are hoping that it's Brockton, as that's the only place that we are available. Good call. <laughs> we are not available in Fall River. <laughs> we are not available in Fall River. Shot on goal coming for Brockton! Wide to the left! Woo! 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 Should we make this four for four? Woo! All four of us in the press box just wooed. It's a tribute to Ric Flair. It was a tribute to Ric Flair. I got a Ric Flair scratch ticket when I was in South Carolina. Really? Yeah, Ric Flair's on a scratch ticket. If you get a woo, you get like 10 bucks. And then if, if you get two guys strutting, it's like another 20 bucks. It's great. There's a figure four leg lock involved. It's really cool. It's the Ric Flair Woo scratch ticket. Google it as soon as you get home. I, I don't doubt it. I'll take your word for it. You should Google it because it's so impressive. Okay, I'll Google. Google the commercial in particular. You'll love it. Okay, I will. It involves Ric Flair at a supermarket. Wooing. Wooing? Wooing. And he's totally in Ric Flair character. He's like, I am styling and profiling with the new Ric Flair Woo Scratch ticket for the North Carolina State Educational Lottery. And he's strutting. It's fantastic. We're in a gaudy robe that no one would wear but Ric Flair. Oh, yeah. <laughs> if I had one of Ric Flair's robes, I'd wear it, wouldn't you? Uh, uh, not really my style, but, but I, you could rock it. You could absolutely wear it. I'd rock at the family Christmas parties. <laughs> family Christmas? Not Thanksgiving? I'd show up to the Tassinari family Thanksgiving with the Ric Flair robe. What? Oh, oh, it's us. You okay? Yeah, I have to go down and the credits. We've got over two minutes to go in this game. We're still tied at one between Brockton and Durfee. The stakes are high, folks. Pride is on the line. A divisional rivalry is on the line. The clock stops at two minutes to go. Now less than two minutes to go in the game. Official time kept by the officials on the field. Suzanne, we were discussing earlier in the broadcast that Lauren Seaver, goalkeeper for Brockton, who's done a fine job today as she has throughout the season, has a lot of fans in attendance. Uh, they have what we call the Seaver fever. The Seaver fever? I had not heard of that, but I like it. It works. And the Seaver fever has been contagious. I believe you. Durfee now with the kick. Time is dwindling. Time is dwindling. These teams have to act fast. Brockton. Brockton. Down at Durfee's end. Oh. Wide to the right. You could feel collectively the entire stadium gasp at that moment, Suzanne. You could. Absolutely you could.
Time dwindling, time dwindling. Brockton knocks it into Durfee territory. If she had not got that ball, there was a play for Brockton right there to punch that one in. And the game comes to a conclusion. And it is a tie. The Brockton Lady Boxers and the Durfee Hilltoppers compete to a 1-1 tie here at Rocky Marciano Stadium. I've just found little uh, iPhone internet action that New Bedford and Fall River actually faced each other earlier back on September 26th, and they ended in a tie 1-1. So Brockton is now 2-0-1 in the big three, and we at least know that Durfee has lost to Brockton once, and they've tied us once, so that makes them at least 0-1-1, and, and they have to face New Bedford again, but we've beaten New Bedford I need paper to do math like this. Did we just win the big three <laughs> with that tie? <laughs> Put it this way. Brockton is in very good shape heading into the postseason. We'll have more information for you folks on our next broadcast. 1-1 your final score between Brockton and Durfee. For everyone here at BCA Sports, see you next time. <laughs>